Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon. Presented by Pacific Office Automation. November football, the ones to be remembered. Week 10, a select few make it all the way through that regular season gauntlet into these playoffs now. The first round postseason edition of Fox Hills Friday Night Lights. Our big game, really all of them on this night. Our first four come from the first year of the new Oregon 6A Open bracket. The top 12 teams, four earning first round buys. Knights seeded 12 and the Timberwolves lost three of them. Three Rivers League's brethren there, Lake Oswego, Lake Ridge, and West Lynn. We turn to Fox 12's Craig Burnback in Beaverton, home to the first time Metro League champs from Mountainside High. The Mavericks out with their big game and the eighth seeded team there along Shoals Ferry. Nick, to call this game wild is an understatement as Tualatin and Mountainside totaled 83 points and the game came down to one final play that anybody that was here will not soon forget. Boy, did Tualatin and Mountainside put on one heck of a show. First up, how about Sam Villadol starting us off? He's going to break some hearts, break some tackles, break off a 43-yard touchdown run, and it's 7-0 home team. But BYU bound Nolan Keeney's going to come right back with the keeper. He's going to zip on in from 25 yards out to make it a 7-6 ball game. You want some passing? Well, Cade Mitchell has some passing for you. The picture-perfect pass to Kellen Hicks, and it was 14-13 Mountainside. But then Keeley's going to come up with what might be the play of the year. He's going to scramble one way, he's going to scramble the other way, and then somehow, some way, uncorks a 50-yard strike to Kalen Simonolik. But oh my goodness, it's a touchdown, and it's a 27-23 to Walton halftime lead. Second half, how about some more? Sam Villadol. He's going to get on into the end zone, and Mountainside was down just 37-33. to But then we have a real game changer. On the ensuing kickoff, that's a fumble, and that's a Mustang's recovery. Very next play, you guessed it, it's Villadel from the nine. He's in, and Mountainside, they got the lead, 39-37. But not for long, here come the T-Wolves, and here comes Cole Hackmeister. He's gonna get, 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 get gone. That's 81 yards to the house, and 12s, it's back up, 39-37. Oh, but the Mustangs, we're not done. It's fourth and one. Here comes the run, right? Wrong. Cade Mitchell throws it up to a wide open Villadol. He's buck naked and scoring. Mountainside's up 44-39 late. Last play of the game, and Killy's going to look to come up with some magic for Tualatin. He gets open. He's in the open field, but then he throws it across the field. And Tualatin thinks they might just have a miracle victory. But no, that is an illegal forward pass, and that's the ball game. Mountainside wins it. 44-39. What was that game like to play in? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, we came out here with an expectation. We knew we had to get done, and we did it. It was amazing playing with these guys. I mean, I couldn't have done it without them. It was a whole team effort. I mean, from the O-line to the defense to the quarterbacks to the running backs, we were just all able to get it done, and it was amazing playing with these guys. Sam Villadell finished with five total touchdowns, and Mountainside needed each and every one of them. They'll bring their high-flying offense next week to Lake Oswego. From Mountainside, I'm Craig Burnback, Friday Night Lights. Holy cow. So next Friday, Mavs pony up to Cobb Field at Lake Oswego High School. Top seeded unbeaten Lakers await now in the 6A open bracket quarters. MHS lost to only Silverton and Lakeridge this season. For the defending 6A champs from Central Catholic stacking wins again. Fifth seeded Rams 9 0. Only LO and Sheldon perfect. CCHS home away from home at Hillsborough Stadium. It's another Portland team. Back to back PIL champs, the Ida B. Wells Guardians, who went 7 2. Early stop from the Wells defense meant Central Catholic had to settle for a field goal. Mario Martinez Ibarra puts it through the uprights. Central Catholic, that field goal up 3 0. But then, boy, devastation here for the Guardians. They would fumble it on the first play of their drive. Donnie Vercher comes up with it, and gives the Rams ball deep in Wells' territory. They would capitalize. They do that. All great teams do. Ty Newberry strolls in to pick him up. 10-0. 
A few plays later, deja vu again. Another Guardian turnover, this time interception. Cole Thomas. Now, a would-be pick six called back due to a penalty to get the Rams possession again. Scarlett and Roll Gold roll right on through. Robbie Long, Landon Kelsey, easy grab. Southern Catholic keeps racking them on up. Fight, though, not over for the Guardians. Wyatt Andler, what a big play. He's had all his career to turn that program around there. Tipped on the sidelines, push out of bounds around the 30. But Central Catholic, a huge stop on the one, keep him out of the end zone, and they would win on the night. 38-14. Congrats to a fantastic campaign for the kids from Wells. But it is CCHS that seeks a back-to-back -back now state crown. It's on to round two, quarterfinal play in the new 6A open play. Rams at fourth seeded Lakeridge. The Pacers picked up a bye after going seven and two and placing third in that Three Rivers League. Got a pair of seven and two teams mixing it up in Sherwood. Tenth seeded Nelson finished second in the Mount Hood Conference, earning the Happy Valley Hawks a flight path. The Pacific Conference champion Bowman, a state finalist a season ago. Opening quarter. Opening score, Sherwood's Wilson Medina, the captain, that C on his chest, making moves when it matters the most. That's a playoff beast. Medina, feast for 43. But the Hawks have the reply. Corbin Crossland can Chris and Cross with the best of them. Hand over some breakfast treats for that O-line two in the film room. An open hole from 45. Game tied at seven. Second quarter for the visiting Whites. They're icy white. Nelson pulling into the lead. Danny Leary in at quarterback for Avery Durdahl. Call works. Out pass. Noah Boria in front of my guy, Kevin Lund. Hawks up 14-7 on a 16-yard touchdown. Home team soon level to back up. Jackson Bell, another senior captain. Never wants to take that jersey off. There's Levi, close strike. Boom, pow. We're locked at 14 at the half. Third quarter. Interesting play here. Sherwood. Don't blink. Man in motion. Delayed handoff. Not a finger on Medina. Called it to brace there. Called a 21-14 lead there. Fourth quarter. Same score. Medina, tip of the cap. The hat trick. Break him off a little something. Get off the guy. Nine yards. Doubles the lead. 28-14. And they keep pounding away as well. Bell in his quiver once more. This time, Michael Brandt. Targeted all alone. 64-yard touchdown. Sherwood slams the door. 42-21. Now they'll take that show on the road. Next week, next stop. Bowman packed the bus for the roadie at second-seeded West Lynn. The Lions earned that bye after going 8-1. This will be just one of the great ones we'll see in that 6A Final Four. They build up towards an epic following Friday night. Week 10, a night to celebrate in South Salem. The Sprague Olympians went from 2-7 a year ago to a second-place finish in that league with an 8-1 mark to collect the sixth seed. Traveling Clackamas Cavaliers swung their sword to the 11-seeded team. They trailed 21-0, but no quit. Justin Larson, Lincoln Ross, every inch counts. Their first touchdown here, Lincoln Jernard, tight end carry across the goal line, trims the deficit 21-6. But the home standing orange, we have a lot of load on talent. Kenya Johnson, senior captain. See the worst of times, see the best of times. Then a touchdown, makes it 27 to six. And their quarterback for the Oles, Ducati Witherspoon, 6'4", 210, senior superstar to Johnson, first down. And then that capper between those two buddies there, Spoonman and Kenya, hand off and get a payday yet again for the Orange Lids, 34 to six at that point. Now, Clackamas is Luke Baker, a wonderful career, grabbing another score before the night would be said and done here, but then Johnson adds another here. 41-12 in favor of the Oles who roll on now to round two. They'll see them take a trip south to Eugene. Unbeaten Sheldon awaits. The third-seeded Iris just won 52-7 a week ago at Sprague's house to win that 6A Special District 1 title. Scores from the 6A championship bracket. Seats 13 through 28 should be scrolling right now along the bottom of your screen. The 4A playoff traditionally tightly contested and traditional in their 16-team format. One of the best pairings on paper was 8-seeded Staten at number 9 Estacada. Fox 12's Dylan Scott reports between the hedges for the Eagles and Rangers. Two teams laying the wood in Timbertown Friday night. A 4A playoff showdown as Estacada hosted Staten in a rematch of a September showdown won by the Eagles 35-21. An electric atmosphere between the hedges. Estacada hosting Staten in the 8-9 matchup to kick off the first round of the 4A playoffs. Only one score in the first half of this rematch, and it goes to the Eagles. Quarterback Hudson Hughes with a big night. 
from the 10. He goes over the top to 43. Cal Hubert mm -mm, eating good in the neighborhood. 7-0 stayed in at the break. The Rangers, winners of four straight coming in, down two quarterbacks, but oh yeah, far from out. Dane Carpenter, only a freshman, but the QB crafting up a huge play. Hooks up with Landon Thomas on the short TD connection. 7-6 ball game late third after the missed two-point conversion. Same score in the fourth. Hughes going to give his team some breathing room. Check this out. The keeper inside the five. Feeling confident. Road team taking a 14-6 lead. Nobody wanting to go home on this night. Rangers back to the air again. Every arm counts on this night. Henry Rydell, 15 yards to Jaden Corden. Finding Cater now 14-12. Under two to play. Eagles trying to salt it away, but Hughes makes one big mistake on the evening. Thomas Placid coming out of nowhere with a pick of the season. Estacada back in business and a chance to cash in big time. Fast forward, six seconds to play. Drama time again in Timbertown. One final play from the goal line to advance. Hand off to Blake Barger, but Staten's defense going to send the Rangers, yes, on a staycation. Check out the effort. Epic game, epic finish. But it's the Eagles taking flight into the quarterfinals with a 14-12 thrilling win. We're just talking about how we got to give it our all, put our whole heart into this, because if we don't, it's over. But everyone was in it. We were in it to win it, and we all worked hard on the goal line and made a stand. A big thing is believe. Believe in ourselves, believe in coaches, believe in our fans. Just believe. That's the big thing. Tomorrow, we got to get on the film, see what, see what we play, scout them out. It's 24 hours, we got to flush it. It's on to the next one. Well, after that thrilling finish, the state and coaching staff said they're going to have to be giant killers moving forward with only top seeds remaining. But after goal line stands like that, the Eagles are feeling pretty confident. In Estacada, Dylan Scott, Friday Night Lights. Boy, what a great one there. Unbeaten number one in the state of Washington, the Canvas Papermakers. Preliminary round matchup on their own turf of Doc Harris Stadium. The Stadium Tigers from Tacoma hit the visit. The 4 a favorite to the old mill town. You know they got dudes. Camus allowed more than 14 points just one game this season. You know they can score more than that. Jake Davidson and the boys racking up a lot. Nice pass, Anthony Forner, another class of 25 star. That would set up this one on the other side of the field. Davidson, Chase McGee. You know he, six foot two senior, gets all the way in. 14 nothing at the 6 p.m. kick. They can sling it. Aerial attack, huh? Davidson, McGee link up once more in front of my guy, Zach Stockland. Too easy, they say. You go back to the well one more time. Playing catch in the backyard. Makers roll to 10 and 0. 56 to 3. Camus has blocked out the dates for state now, December 7th from Husky Stadium in Seattle. How about the 3A Greater St. Helens League champs for the first time in 17 years? 8 and 1, Evergreen, the Plainsmen, beyond hype to host their first round playoff game at McKinsey Stadium in Vancouver. Stanwood coming in, all about the defense. What a smack here. Stanwood's Trison Mangold, big time quarterback hit. Goal line fumble here, though. Stanwood was about to score, but Makai Miller recovers it, waits for that celebration. The kick flip, 3-3 at the break. Third quarter, visitors get into the lead. The first touchdown, Eben Bland Jr. Eway playing catch up. That's fine. We got James Bethune Jr. Big game, James. Makes it 13 10. But Stanwood scores again. They pull off the stunner. 20 to 17, ending Evergreen sensational season. They go 8 and 2. Woodland and Washugal also eliminated in 2A on this night. La Center advances in 1A. The majority of the WIAA state playoff games will be on Saturday. The Oregon 5A playoffs remain the traditional 16-team field, just like 6A. The state final in 5A will also be on Black Friday. Top-seeded Silverton always packs him deep in the foxhole from McGinnis Field. 8-1, hosting 6-3 in the South Prep. Number 16 Falcons flying in out of Milwaukee. Fox is, boy, a well-oiled machine. Sawyer Tini, one of the top slingers around. Got great, great guys, great hands and weapons like that one. Sutton Kenzie, ball in that family's blood. A gain of 35. That blood's orange and black. Same drive. Daniel Kenzie hammers it home the opening score. Fox is here off to the races. Logan Uto, a heavy hauler. Special team, being special. Logan logs on a punt return touchdown. They're playoff ready. Silverton into the quarterfinals against Summit now back at home next Friday. 52-0 from the Mid-Valley.
but the reigning 5A champs will be 97070. That's Wilsonville, Oregon, don't you know? Fifth seed Wildcats, 7 and 2. Police escort out of the stadium there. Randall Stadium, hosting 6 and 3 Ben. The Lava Bears, a 12 seed. When you're on the road as an underdog, you better start quick. Ben did that. Caden Cooper to Max Duncan. Some yo yo, walk the dog, shed a tackle, rock the baby, put him to sleep. 52 yard touchdown, Lava Bears. Cat scratch back, Mark Weeper. Carter Christensen at the one. Knock, knock, it's Roman Kealoa. Give your tailbacks a load to get in, game tied at seven. Now Adam Gunther's guys possessed to repeat. You gotta have defense like this one from Luke Carley. Supplies the INT. Then you gotta check this, maybe a play of the night. Weeper. Into the night where Nick knows how to fingertip the ball. That's Nick Crowley from his keister. Sitting on the job, gets it done. 32 yard touchdown. Wow. 63 34. Wilson to the final. Next up, those 5A corners at Fort Cedar Churchill. And Eugene, playing down a level, has done loads for the confidence in the numbers of Ian Reynoso's Glencoe program. 7 2 Crimson Tide. A 7 seed is league champ for the first time since 2007, hosting number 10 Lebanon from Airfield in Hillsboro. Tide hadn't won a playoff game in 11 years. Warriors three losses all came against the top six teams in state. Lebanon down seven in that second half, but Bryson Edwards, a plan for that. The junior quarterback marched him down the field, takes it in himself, and drags in the defenders, too. We're tied at 21. Now, the Glinko offense had a slow start in the second half. The defense had to step up in a big-time way. This pass attempt defended by Aiden Bochamp. Yeah, Aiden's pumped up about that. Speaking of big players, Daniel Henninger was Glencoe's offense on this night, really all season. One of the best backs in these parts. Rumbles for 20, and then the Crimson Tide steadily working their way down the field. He finally slam one in. It's 27-21, Glencoe up by six. But a missed extra point means the Warriors still have a chance. Three minutes to go. Wow, down the field they go. Fourth down pass, Edwards, Logan Large in the margin. Warriors touchdown. Not an extra point, they go for two. And it's Edwards who runs it in. They're up 29-27, seven ticks to go in the game. So Glencoe still with one chance left. But that would be squashed out. Gabe Jester. Game ceiling pick, 29-27. Lebanon, that happy trip back home. They've got another game to prepare for. Uh, this one feels great. Um, two years in a row winning first round, and hopefully we can just keep advancing from here. And, yeah, I mean, it feels great, man. Great to see the, all the community out here, especially with the long road trip like this. Yeah, that next round will be at number two, Mountain View in Bend. Elsewhere in 5A, Dallas advances with a 28-13 win over Hood River Valley. The Dragons will host West Albany as the Bulldogs defeated Hillsboro 41-7.